Good afternoon, Bobcats, and welcome to BBTV. My name is Lauren, bringing you the news that matters. Today is Thursday, May 25th, 2017. For today's episode, we will be sharing with you a collection of some of the best events covered this year. Let's get started. The first story we'll be sharing takes us all the way back to one of our first episodes. Over the summer, the Rio Olympics took place, so our reporters went out to see what you felt were the greatest moments from the Games. Every four years, the world comes together to witness the greatest sporting event in history, the Olympics. This year's Olympics were held in Rio de Janeiro. From swimming to gymnastics to basketball, many amazing moments came from these games. Buffett staff members share with you their favorite moments. Sure. Um, I enjoy running, and so I like to watch the runners, and there's a runner called um, Fast Kate. My name is Kate, but I am not fast. Um, but it was fun watching her. I was actually on the treadmill, and this was her first time ever making it to a podium ever and qualifying for the Olympics. And she uh, ran the 800 meter and actually qualified. Awesome. So that was my favorite. And I definitely pumped the speed up on my treadmill while I was watching. Uh, well, my favorite moment of the Olympics was during swimming. Swimming is my favorite event to watch, and um, Simone Manuel won uh, the gold medal for the 100-meter freestyle, and when she realized she won, her face was just priceless. Uh, she just had, her mouth was wide open, and you could just sense her excitement. Yes, I didn't really get a chance to watch it all that much, but I did get to see a lot of the recaps, and something I found completely hilarious was the Filipino divers. Um, they were, it was just funny how much they failed um, at the Olympics. So I thought that to be ironic and funny. Okay, my favorite moment in the Rio Olympics was when Katie Ledecky won the 800 meter freestyle. And I loved that moment because she was 11 seconds ahead of the silver medalist. And when she got finished, I just was absolutely thrilled. It was awesome. One of our favorite things here at BBTV is to cover the Student Council Spirit Days. After taking pictures of students and staff members who participate, we always create a fun slideshow video to share. Check out a little bit from each of our Spirit Days.
At BBTV, we have always made it a priority to cover the topics that Bobcats care about. That's why this year we created two brand new segments, the Movie Corner and the Music Corner. For today, let's share with you some of the best segments that came out from the Movie Corner. Hey Bobcats, it's mainly for another segment of the Movie Corner. Just like you, here at BBTV, we love movies and have our favorites. For me personally, my favorite movie is Pitch Perfect. Today we went out to interview Bobcats on their favorite movie and why it holds a special meaning to them. Check it out. My favorite movie is Lion King because I watched it a lot as a kid and it's just a pretty good movie. Um, probably Sandlot because it's a baseball movie and I like baseball and I watched it a lot when I was younger. Uh, my favorite movie would have to be Dumb and Dumber. Um, and the reason for that is there's so many classic lines and I just have great memories of watching it with my dad and brother and just laughing so hard. Fast and Furious series, specifically Too Fast, Too Furious because it's just action packed and it's a really great movie with a lot of great stunts and scenes. All time favorite movie ever is The Karate Kid, the original Karate Kid with Daniel LaRusso. Uh, the reason that I love that movie the most is because I was an inspiring Taekwondo wannabe when I was like, nine years old. Um, I like every single Disney movie out there and I like them because <laughs> they all like every single one involves singing and dancing and that just I love it because it gets it gets me pumped <laughs> it gets it and it just makes my heart just like explode with joy. <laughs> I just love it so much. Cats, it's Michael here in the movie corner. Easter was this past Sunday, and you might have hid or died Easter eggs. In the movie world, there's also Easter eggs, but they aren't what you think they are. An Easter egg in the movie world is an unexpected feature that is hidden in a movie, show, or video game. Usually this included as a joke or bonus. Today we gathered five Easter eggs you probably didn't notice. Michael here in the movie corner. If you're watching a show or movie, what you see is the final product that consists of months or even years of hard work. But what you don't see is what's going on behind the scenes. We gathered some famous behind the scene photos from your favorite movies and shows. Check it out. One of our goals this year for BBTV was to cover more Buffett events, including sports, clubs, and things happening in our building. To do this, we created a segment called the After School Hangout. Check out some of the best footage our reporters captured.
For only being student reporters, our BBTV team has sure nailed a few pretty incredible interviews. These included a college football Hall of Famer and an NFL player giving back to their community. Oh, they don't have him yet! Look at Tommy Frazier! How many tackles can one man break? Touchdown! The first section we're starting off with is career. What was it like winning two national championships? Oh, it was a lot of fun, you know, out there with your teammates and, and doing something that hadn't been done for 20-some years and being the first team to do it and winning back-to-back -back undefeated championships was the most important part, and, and we, we had a great time as a unit. Which national championship meant more to you? The Florida one, the second one, because I was able to play the whole year, and I was able to be the team from the state that I was born in. What was your relationship like with Tom Osborne? We had a great relationship, you know. It was one of those deals where, one of those relationships where I saw him every, pretty much every day for four years. So it was kind of like a father-son type relationship. And, and he taught me a lot about not football, but about life and how to carry yourself and, and how to be a person of God and, and how, to, how to give back to your community. What game was your favorite during the years you played and why did it make it your favorite? Um, I think it was Colorado 1995. When we played out there, I think it was one of those games where I didn't like Colorado and they didn't like me and, and being able to go out there and beat them the way we did. You know, it was very special. It was a lot of fun. Uh, what was your favorite play to run? My favorite play to run was probably the option because you know, it gave me an opportunity to either pitch the ball or keep it. You know, it, was, it, was, it wasn't an easy, easy play to read, but it was a lot of fun because if you, if you executed it right, it gained a lot of yards. I had two parents that worked hard. Many athletes dream about being successful in high school, college, and the pros. We met one individual who achieved this dream. Uh, well, I'm from Springfield, Missouri. Uh, that's where I grew up. I was an All-American in high school uh, in football. Um, did a lot of different things um, besides just football uh, in high school. I did track and. I was in choir and music and those type of things. I was lucky enough to get a scholarship to play at the University of Nebraska uh, from 1996 to 99. Uh, we won two Big 12 championships and won a national championship while I was there. Uh, I was also selected to an All-American team there. And then I was drafted in the third round by the Green Bay Packers. Uh, so I played four years for the Packers and then I played two years in arena football. But what do you do when your career is all said and done? For Steve Warren, the answer was to give back to the community. DREAM stands for developing relationships through education, athletics, and mentoring. This mentoring program is designed with kids in mind. Um, it was just something that I felt like I wanted to do to give back. Um, and when I finished playing professional football, I didn't quite know what I wanted to do professionally. Uh, and this was a way that I found uh, that I could work and also provide for my family uh, and also do something that was giving back to the community. Um, so I was lucky enough to be able to start the organization and now here we are 10 years later. Another one of the improved things we did here in Mr. Torpin's episodes was an audition of the BB was the audition of the BBTV feature reel. This allowed us to have a huge variety of content that Bobcats loved watching, like some of these examples. Today we'll be we will be focusing on the latest online craze, the mannequin challenge. As you know, this is where a group will freeze and then gets filmed. Today we will go to the world of Twitter where several of our very own teachers have posted their class or clubs participating. Check it out.
It looks like it landed on top five, which means we'll be taking a specific list of five items. For today, since we shared a story about Six Flags, let's take a look at the top five biggest roller coasters in the world. Check it out. That's all the time we have here on today's episode, but we still have a ton of great content for tomorrow's episode, so please join us on Friday for part two of the best of BBTV. Signing off for BBTV one last time, this has been Lauren Harris. It has been an honor serving you as the official A-Day main anchor. However, creating BBTV is definitely a team effort and we couldn't have done it without... Willa Rout. Fian Kemper. Hunter Schaefer. Isaiah Mapp. Emily Munson. Mackenzie Tatum. Dylan Schaefer. Xavier Wade. Jaden Curtis Sayers. Drew Schaefer. Ellison Vavra. Aubrey Henrich. Michael Warden. Nate Luters. Jaden White. Caleb Nickel. Jesus Diaz. Justin DeHigh. Evan Mills. Abby Wagner. Alex Schoberg. Malia Avant. Laura Kirschenbaum. Mm -hmm.